Hello everyone, Tristan here again with yet another longsword review. Once again, I'm going to do a comparative piece, this time discussing the Albion Count and Albion Steward. Now, before everyone gets hung up on semantics, Yes, these would be more appropriately referred to as epée de guerre, or swords of war, due to the blade types. But I have several longsword students who train with these, and to be fair, they are swords that are long. And to be honest, I just didn't want to call this an epée de guerre review. It's too many syllables. So, these swords are actually quite similar, except for differences in the fittings, which are themselves mainly aesthetic. The blades, which are an Okashot type 13A, are just under 35 inches long, and a hair under 2 inches broad. There's a beautiful fuller that travels down 3 quarters of the blade, which parallels the breadth of the blade itself, which gently tapers before transitioning into a rounded tip. The overall length of the swords are pretty much exactly the same too, right around 43 and 3 quarters inches. There's a slight variance in length, but honestly this is almost negligible. More on that when I discuss the grips themselves. Likewise, the overall weights are very similar, just different by about an ounce. Again, I find these differences functionally negligible, but let's go on to the interesting stuff. The steward is your, well, I wouldn't say simple, but certainly more austere war sword. The cross guard is straight and faceted, with a slight swell in the center. It's nearly identical to the cross of the Albion Cressy, for those familiar. It's got a wheel pommel, as you can see, crowned with a peen block. The count, on the other hand, has a little bit more flair to it. The cross guard, which is sculpturally stunning, with its decorative knobs and its flared faceted terminals, was inspired by a sword in the University of Uppsala storeroom. The pommel, which is available either in bronze or steel, I'd go with the bronze one for sure, is based on a sword in the German Historical Museum in Berlin. The original has some heraldic elements in it, which were left out for this, but Albion's model does also include a peen block, which is present in the original. The grips for both are, again, quite similar. The grip for the steward is one eighth of an inch longer than that of the count. But other than that, the only other minor difference is that while the count has a single riser in the center, the steward has a pair of risers. This doesn't really affect the feel of the grip too much, since I tend to keep the riser or risers in between my fingers anyway. And with such short grips, it's not like there's a lot of options for hand placement. The thing I do like, however, which is common to both of these swords, is the octagonal cross-section of the grips. This is something I've really come to like, as opposed to ovaloid grips, and especially as opposed to wasted grips. These swords are very comfortable in the hands. Before I finish up, I'm sure everyone wants to hear about how these swords handle. I am going to speak about both at once, since, as I mentioned before, except for very minor details and the obvious aesthetic differences, they're essentially the same sword. These are very light, very responsive swords. The challenge, however, is due to the very thin, broad blade, edge alignment has to be spot on. Otherwise, the blades will twist and wobble and cause all sorts of issues. But, use them well and these swords will cut like a hot knife through butter. I was hoping to cut with these for this video, but, well, it's the first day of spring today, which means that, here in New York, we're bracing for another blizzard. Instead, if you want to see some in-action shots of these swords, actually this count in particular, check out my second longsword review, An Array of Albions, and also there's another clip of short stroke cutting. I'll throw some links around the screen here, just in case you don't want to search around too much. In conclusion, all things being considered, if you're really on the fence between these two models, it really comes down to the looks. If all you want is a nice, small, agile cutter to practice with, why not get the steward? However, if you're the sort who likes to add a little variety in your growing collection of swords, the count is a nice addition, since it's just a little fancier without sacrificing any of the utilitarian aspects. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you enjoy these sword reviews, please be sure to like and subscribe. If you really like what you're seeing here at Squinting Rabbit, please consider joining our Patreon. As much as we love making these videos, they do take a fair amount of time and money, and all donations do help to offset the production costs, and we really appreciate everyone who's helped out. Until next time, take care.